Well, good morning, Higher Praise Family Church. Hope you guys are doing great. We're going to welcome you more formally a bit later. But first, we're going to jump right into our scripture and our prayer. This morning, our scripture is going to come from Proverbs chapter 4, verses 25 through 27. Verse 25 reads, let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or the left, but keep your foot from evil. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. God, we just want to say thank you, Father, for today, oh God. Thank you for this week, oh God. Thank you for your hedge of protection that was around us, oh God, all week, oh God. Yes, Lord, uh, no hurt, harm, or danger came to us, oh God, and we just want to say thank you, Lord. Lord, we want to say thank you for being a provider this week, oh God. Yes, Lord, for uh, providing us with, with jobs, oh God, and with money, and with uh, food on the table, oh God, clothes on our backs, oh God, shoes on our feet, oh God. Yes, Lord, we just want to say thank you for being a provider, God. We just want to take the moment to lift your name up, oh God. Yes, Lord, we lift you Hi, oh God, you're so amazing, you're so marvelous, you're so glorious, you're worthy, oh God. You're remarkable, God, and you are worthy of all the praise. So we just take a moment to elevate your name. Yes, Lord, we take another moment, Father, to ask for forgiveness, oh God. Yes, Lord, yes, oh God, we just want to ask for forgiveness for our sins of omission, oh God, and our sins of commission, oh God, the things that we did that we weren't supposed to and the things that we didn't do, oh God. Yes, Lord, the times where we should have prayed, Father, the times where we should have been studying, oh God, our word, the times where we should have shared the gospel, oh God, we just ask for forgiveness, Father. Yes, Lord. Yes, oh God, I just want to take a moment out to uh, lay a couple requests before you, oh God, I just ask that you go with all the children that are endeavoring on on virtual learning, oh God, for the first part of the school year, Father. Yes, Lord, especially those little ones, oh God, those ones who are starting kindergarten and pre-K, oh God. This is their first school experience, oh God, so they may be a little nervous. They don't know uh, their their kids in their class. They don't really know their teacher, Father. So I just ask that you, you be with them, oh God. Yes, Lord, it says in your word that the Holy Spirit will and can teach us all things, Father. So if it's virtual, God, we can still learn virtually, Father. Yes, Lord, I ask that you go with the teachers, oh God. Yes, not uh, um, especially the first year teachers, oh God, that this is their first teaching experience, oh Lord. Yes, oh God, they have to teach virtually. Yes, oh God, this wasn't in the plan, oh God. This wasn't uh, what they studied, oh God. This isn't in the classes that they took, oh God, but they have to adjust and learn how to teach virtually, oh God. Yes, Lord, so I, I pray right now against the spirit of frustration, oh God. I, I pray right now against the spirit of confusion, Father. Yes, Lord, I just pray peace on those situations, oh God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, this will be a good school year, oh God, for both the kids and the teachers, Father. Yes, oh Lord, and again, we just want to pray, oh God, for, uh, for, for peace, oh God, on our land, oh God, for what, everything that's going on, Father. There's confusion, oh God. There's fear, oh God. There's uncertainty, oh God. So we just call right now on the Prince of Peace, oh God. Yes, Lord, I ask that you send peace, oh God, peace that surpasses all understanding, Father. You are able, oh God, and you are worthy, oh God, and we believe you, we trust you, Father. Yes, Lord, we seal this in your darling son, Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning and welcome to Higher Praise Family Church, where we are building families between the church while bridging the gap between the church and the community. We just want to say welcome to our family and our friends. Hey, friends, we just want to say, hey, what's up? How you doing? If this is your very first time tuning in, we need you to jump down into the chat. Click on that link and let us know that you are here. Hey, family, we know that there are two ways that we can stay connected. The first way to stay connected is by getting with your small group. So make sure you get with your small group leader for those meeting times. The second way to stay connected is by jumping on our Wednesday night Zoom happening every week at 7 p.m. for Bible study. We are going through 
the book of Proverbs. Hey family, what if I told you there is a third way you can stay connected? As we are approaching our 20th year anniversary, we are endeavoring to leave a legacy. Currently, we are working on a manual. The manual we are gonna pass on to the next generation of HPFC members. It includes a family devotional, a neighborhood evangelism, and rites of passage. So right now we are inviting everyone, when I say everyone, I mean everyone to jump on the Zoom today at 4 p.m. so we can contribute to our legacy. Hey, King's Kids, I need you to get up right now. I need you to get that crust off the side of your mouth. I need you to take a shower. I need you to get some breakfast because right after the sermon today, we got King's Kids Church on Zoom happening, happening at 12 p.m. All right, family, we hope that you stay safe. We hope that you stay encouraged. And we can't wait to see you guys. We love you. And you know what I'm going to say. We will see you when we see you. Good morning. Welcome to High Praise and Worship Service. We want you to enjoy yourselves. Enjoy the selection here. It reminds us that no matter where we are, no matter what we're going through, that God is in control. He's awesome. He's almighty. And he reigns. From the rising of the morning sun to the going down of the same, Lord, you rule with great authority and in sovereignty reign. Yeah. Play the human race, say. As your glory fills this place.
morning and welcome to Higher Praise Family Church. I'm Justin. I'm Amara. And these are your Sunday morning announcements. Join King's Kids for Children's Church on Zoom at 12 p.m. I'm inviting the church every Sunday at 4 o'clock. We're developing a church-wide legacy book. And in this legacy book, it's going to have a devotional for families, how families can grow together in the Lord. It's going to have a section for rites of passage. How can our young people establish milestones in their lives that mark significant days and events in their lives where they transition different stages of their life as they matriculate through um, elementary to middle school to high school, significant events. I'm going to show you how to celebrate those events in this rites of passage. And then how can you as a family be evangelistic? How can you make disciples as a family? Join us for corporate prayer and Bible study every Wednesday at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Join us as we go through the discipleship movement every Sunday at 9 a.m. via Zoom. Good morning, Higher Praise. It's time for your medical moment. So today's is hydration. That means my body is not dehydrated. It has more than enough water to do normal metabolism. When I don't get out of bed and I'm relaxing, behind the scenes, my body is doing everything that it needs to do. And the body needs 64, 64 ounces of water per day in order to do normal metabolism. If you are COVID positive, please remember, this virus is super sticky, so it's going to get rid of as much water as it can. That's why it gives you the fever and the chills to make that water go away. So make sure you're drinking twice the amount of normal metabolism. So that's 128 ounces of water per day if you're COVID positive. It helps the secretion stay super thin and it makes sure that the virus cannot have anything to stick to. So hydration is super important. Well, what's up fam? Hey, I'm here to introduce our new line, RR. I'm in a radical relationship series with Jesus. So get your shirts. You can order them online. RR, we have red, purple, white. Hey, but this is the season of radical relationship. And so support this year's theme. I'm in a radical relationship. It's the radical relationship that will transform your life. And we are in a radical relationship with Christ. So support T-shirts 15, 1, 5, 1, 5 for your radical relationship t-shirt. Is it your first time visiting us this morning? Click the link in the chat so we can welcome you more formally following today's service. Have a question during pastor's sermon? Drop your questions in the chat window. Be sure to reach out to these saints this week and show them some birthday love. This concludes our morning announcements. Make it a great day and a significant week. Wait just one minute before we continue with service. Have you subscribed to our YouTube channel yet? Take a quick second, scroll down, and hit that big red subscribe button. And hit that little bell so you're notified when new sermons are posted. Be sure to stay connected through the week by visiting us on Facebook listening to or watching the latest sermon, either through podcasts or YouTube or visiting our website. Well, good morning, Higher Praise Family Church. It is time to sow into God's kingdom. Acts 20 and 35, second part of that verse B, says it is more blessed to give than to receive. What a privilege it is to be able to give today as good stewards in God's kingdom. We give because we are blessed because we are favored and we are in a position of strength. Also, we give as good stewards because we wanna make sure that God's kingdom continues to advance in these challenging times. So don't forget, give on Givelify. You can download the app and give electronically. You can also mail in your gifts, your tithes, and your offering to our location at 2909 Horton Road. Don't forget the sweet spot. We give also to those who are less fortunate in our house. Sometimes things happen, things occur, and people need assistance. And so our sweet spot allows us to give. So sacrifice $5 today and give to the sweet spot and be a blessing to someone in our family. We love you, we're praying for you, believe in God's best, 
The good news is when we sow and when we give, it comes back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Well, come on and clap your hands, cheerful givers. Let's sow into God's kingdom. Moving 
Good morning, family. What a blessing, what an honor and privilege it is to always stand before you. Do not take it lightly or for granted. Want to make sure we are inspiring, make sure we are motivational, but make sure we are imparting from the Spirit of the Lord in this season. Uh, Right where you are, come on, let's just um, welcome and invoke the power in God's presence into this moment um, as we prepare to receive revelation, knowledge, and handles for our faith and inspiration and impartation. Lord, we love you and bless you. Come on right where you are. Just open your mouth and tell the Lord how much you love him, how much you adore him. Lord, we lift our hands this morning in our living rooms or our dining rooms, wherever we are in our places of comfort as we sign in virtually, oh Lord. And we bless you for being our God and our Father. We open our hearts and our minds to receive revelation and understanding of your word and your truth that we may live as light and salt in these troubling times. Lord, we are excited for such a time as this. You have called us, you have positioned us. You have given us your provision to not just survive, but to thrive. And so Lord, we look to you, the author and perfecter of our faith. Illumine our hearts now, Lord. Give us um, the willingness and the ability to grab a hold of that which we have been grabbed a hold of by you and by your spirit. Lord, we love you. Thank you for first loving us. I pray now for those watching. I pray for their families. I pray for their households. I pray, Lord, for the challenges that they face. And I thank you for your word that reminds us in all things, we are more than conquerors. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, our assignment this morning, my assignment this morning comes from Matthew very very familiar pericope, Matthew chapter 5, um, verses 3 through 10. I want to start at verse 6. Um, That's my focal passage um, as we are um, living in, again, challenging times, but I believe also um, exciting times for the body of Christ and the kingdom as the kingdom of God is forcefully advancing. Um, The prophet declared that the kingdom of God suffers violence but forceful men lay hold of it. So I believe in these times, um, it is time for us to grab a hold of the kingdom. And I believe the only way we can truly do that is that we are living spirit-filled lives, that our lives are overflowing with the spirit of God and the power of God, God, um, consequently and ergo the blessing of God. You are blessed and want to um, highlight that this morning really in context of the Beatitudes. And so um, I've taught this before, um, but I was uh, want to revisit it um, in light of just a different span, a different um, revelation um, having and regarding um, the spirit of God. I mean, what it means to be blessed. We always talk about um, being blessed in Christendom. Um, but today I want to um, really um, uncover, unpack another layer of um, the blessed life, which I am equating today to the spirit filled life, the life that is overflowing with the spirit of God. And um, so uh, ironically, we're not coming from the book of Acts where most would consider um, um, text um, dealing with the spirit of God and being filled with the spirit. But watch here, right here in Matthew chapter three, um, chapter five um, in the Beatitudes as Christ admonishes um, his disciples, this discourse um, that carried on for days, um, the Sermon on the Mount. Um, But in it is encouragement and life application for the blessed life. And again, I'm equating that to the spirit-filled life, which is the antidote to the challenges we face. We cannot live out of our flesh. We cannot live in carnality. We cannot make um, emotional responses in these times. We need sound, um, wisdom. Uh, We need the power of God's spirit, spirit, not just with us, but overflowing out of, of us in these times. And so I want to stir your spirit, man, today. So I need you to tune in with your spirit, man, and hear what the Lord is saying as Revelation admonishes, admonishes us. He who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying 
And so there is, I believe, a message that will encourage you, that will um, increase you and increase your capacity in light of the dark opposition that we face today. And oftentimes our human nature seeks to counteract when we face opposition. In other words, when things come our way that, are, that is negative or seemingly um, against us, our initial response is typically to do something. Let that soak in. We typically want to do something. Um, let me remind you that um, our doing as believers is not the solution. I'm going to suggest today that it is our being. Our being rather than our doing must be our first and initial and inaugural response to all that is going on in our lives. I've tagged this text this morning. Attitude determines altitude. Attitude determines altitude. Uh, Matthew 5 3, um, and 6 says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Just a reminder, contextually, 2 Corinthians suggests that we are new creatures in Christ. In Christ, we are a new creature. This word comes from the word actually creation. So we are actually a new creation. When we are born again, it's good news. When we are born again, we are new creations. Um, the Apostle Paul goes on to say that the old is gone once and for all, aorist tense, which means pointed action. The new comes, present tense, continues the action. The new continues to come, ergo, when we accept and own, understand, realize our born again experience, inaugurates literally newness for every aspect of our lives. That's good news. Acts 17 reminds us and informs us 17, 20 says that in him we live, we move and we have our being. Ergo, when we are born again, we cannot and should not exist in ourselves or our old existence. We exist in our new existence. Watch this, which is in God. And it is from God. He is the source. That's why in the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. He is the source. So when I live, move, and have my being in the source, which is newness in God, therefore things are new around me. I'm going somewhere. Ephesians 1 and 3 says that he has blessed us, watch this, with all spiritual blessings. Where? In the heavenly realms. The source of our blessing, watch this, the source of our favor is in the heavenly realms, not in the earthly realm. When we realize this, we connect and stay connected or we should have a desire to stay connected to the heavenly versus the earthly. God then empowers us through his spirit with fruit and gifts. Galatians 5, and 23. How do we maintain this newness? How do we maintain this new beginning? Through fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, kindness, long suffering, temperance, self-control, faith. These are then fruit that the spirit provides to help us maintain newness in this life that we live. And also reading first Corinthians 12, 10 and following. We read about the gifts of the spirit, which empower us to achieve and accomplish purpose as we live life in the spirit. And one thing that is profound, the Apostle Paul in Ephesians 6, 13 after talking about putting on the whole armor of God in the context of spiritual warfare, he says, watch this, literally just stand. Having done all to stand, stand. Why do we stand? We stand in the knowledge and the power of, watch this, of being who we are and whose we are. I can't take credit um, information um, from this sermon today. Um, I read a book um, called The Joshua Code, um, Dr. O.S. Hawkins. He is a prolific scholar and writer, and man, he has tremendous insight. And so I want to give him credit um, for insight given that I will glean from today in our presentation. Let me suggest, again, we are talking about the Beatitudes. So the Beatitudes suggest how we should be, not how we should do. <laughs> the Beatitudes are not commandments. Commandments have to do with actions and doing. Beatitudes have to do with attitudes, mindset, perspective. Commandments have to do with conduct. Beatitudes deal with character. Your attitude is a reflection of your character. Oh, it is good. Our actions flow from our attitudes and our conduct issues out of our character. 
Lord, help me. Let me say it again. Our actions flow from our attitudes and our conduct issues out of our character. Let me suggest again a three dimensional approach again to this verse three and five when it talks about hungering and thirsting for righteousness for they shall be filled. I suggest again there are three dimensions um, for um, of the spirit being filled or being filled with the spirit. First, there is an inauguration of the spirit an ontological presence of when we are born again, we receive the spirit. This is witness here in first um, verses three through five. Blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Point number one. Again, the author is not talk. Christ is not talking about abject poverty. So he's not suggesting that we need to live a life of poverty to enter into the kingdom of God. And so this is a misnomer. Some um, denominations embrace this, and I believe it is erroneous teaching because when we look at the book of Proverbs, when we look in Acts, when we look at various scriptures, even in Corinthians, um, the law of reciprocity, sowing and reaping, that there's no way you can live by spiritual principles and live in poverty. So what is he talking about? He's talking about spiritually bankrupt, the knowledge, the revelation, the understanding of being spiritually bankrupt without Christ. So blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who realize that without Christ, they are nothing. Blessed are those who realize that without Christ, there is no righteousness. There is no salvation. That's why Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man comes to the father, but by me. This process begins. So when I realize that I am nothing without Christ, therefore, faith where, where faith where the object of my faith is Christ. Therefore, my life now becomes rich because I have the knowledge of Christ. Two. We see the inauguration of the kingdom. This text, this phrase for theirs is the kingdom. We will see it again in verse 10. But we see how now in verse three, it says, bless are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We are ushered into the kingdom by realizing and accepting our own spiritual bankruptcy and depending on Christ for our inheritance of salvation. That is the receiving of the spirit Two, number one um, point. Number two, blessed are they that mourn. Watch this, this sequence. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Not saying those that go to funerals shall be comforted. And I know some of y'all watch Martin. I'm not talking about the little lady that goes to funerals. I'm talking about the person that realizes, watch this, he says, blessed are, the, are those that mourn. Those that realize that they are in abject poverty without Christ, watch this, causes grief, causes an internal movement. So blessed are they that mourn. So once we first realize, number one, that I have no um, value in my spirit without Christ. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there's the kingdom of heaven. I then move to watch this grieving. Blessed are those that mourn. I grieve not over individuals. I grieve over my inability to be spiritual without Christ. Moves me to number three. Blessed are the meek, for they shall, for theirs is the kingdom. Watch this. For they shall see God. I'm sorry. Watch this. So the word meek there is a picture of a wild animal who has now been broken. Um, so the picture we see then mild animals who are un, who are untamed or wild. They're loose and they run around animals that have been tamed. Watch this now have the ability to be moved with the slightest movement or the slightest nudge. That's good. That's the metaphor. That's the picture. Blessed are those. Watch this. Blessed are the, are the meek, for they shall. So the meek suggests again that now I am able to be moved by the slightest nudge. Again, so now that in the context of this born again experience, now that I have been born into the kingdom of God, now that I have been born again, watch this. My will is able to be nudged, able to be moved by the slightest touch of God. In other words, God doesn't have to holler at me. He doesn't have to scream at me. All he has to do is simply touch me, move me to to move my volition and my will. I've been broken. And so meekness speaks of a spirit that has been broken. Blessed are the broken. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And that's why Christ says in Luke twenty two forty two, not my will, but what your will be done. Can I suggest this is a perfect um, progression when we talk about um, the receiving and being filled with the spirit of God and then being filled to overflowing? It begins, number one, with these first two verses, three through five. 
to receive the spirit. I enter the kingdom by being poor in spirit, by recognizing that my spirituality has no value without Christ. Then moving on after I recognize that I move to grieving my grief over that I need God, which is the inner movement that will cause me to be meek. Watch this broken. And again, our lives will not be changed until we have been broken in our spirit. Blessed are the meek. Second dimension. So we move from having the inauguration of the spirit to being filled with the spirit. Verse three. Um, I'm sorry. Verse six. Um, Matthew five, six. Blessed are those that hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Righteousness. Watch this is the pursuit or striving. And it's the pursuit or striving of righteousness rather than happiness. Uh Oh, so. When we talk about blessing of this hunger and thirsting, that we strive and we pursue righteousness rather than happiness. Watch this. um, This grammatical construct is the present tense in the Greek, which suggests it is continuous action. He says, blessed are those who are pursuing and striving or blessed those who continuously pursue, continuously strive for righteousness. Watch this. For they shall be filled. Eris. Punctilia action, pointed action. So as I continue to pursue God, as I continue to strive for godliness, watch this. I am being filled at the same time. The picture of this is um, Exodus um, in Luke chapter 17 and 11, the lepers that were healed. The Bible says that while they were on their way to the priest, they were healed. In other words, as they were in process, they were literally in progress. That's good news. You can be in process, but the good news is you are in progress when you are in process. And so many times we overlook that and think that we have to be perfect overnight. But here's the good news. The Bible tells us now, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. When we start pursuing, when we start striving, watch this, we start thriving. Why? Because we are filled when we pursue and strive for righteousness. Good news. So there's power in being in progress, power in being in progress. So we are being filled. So verse five and six speaks of the field life, those who are filled with the spirit. And last but not least, the third dimension, filled to overflowing. So the inauguration of the spirit comes at the salvation experience. We are born again. We then move to being filled And then the third dimension, we move to being filled to overflowing. Let's watch this. Matthew 5, 7 through 10. What does it look like being filled? Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the merciful. For they shall receive mercy. Now watch this. Um, The way this grammatical construct is set up. Another translation could be blessed are the merciful ones. For they shall receive mercy, which suggests that the mercy that I show, the mercy that I give is not a single act, but it is my bent in life now. In other words, when my when I am truly born again, my life now is bent toward being merciful rather than sporadic acts of mercy. And there's a difference because some people would suggest that if I show mercy one time, I'm merciful. This text suggests unless you have a bent toward being merciful. In other words, when we start looking to be merciful, what does it mean to be merciful? Not giving people what they deserve. And so that is oftentimes hard because, you know, we they just need to get it, don't they? When they do us wrong. But the scripture here says, blessed are the merciful for they shall watch this receive mercy. Uh Oh, the law of reciprocity kicks in. And so now it speaks of mercy as a lifestyle, not as an act. Of course, this speaks of an eschatology in the end times. We shall receive mercy. This is good news. So if I show mercy now, I'll receive mercy later in the judgment. But watch this. The good news is it also speaks of the lifestyle now. Am I showing mercy now so I can receive mercy now? Isn't it ironic that the characterization of a life being controlled or overflowing with the spirit is the ability to show mercy. Hmm. Man, we live in an age where vengeance is apropos, where getting back and getting even and, you know, I do you the way you do me. That's 
seemingly the norm. But scripture says the kingdom comes and the kingdom life, watch this, is expressed in the ability to show mercy. Do not give people, watch this, what you think they deserve. Second point, in being overflowing or being controlled by the Spirit, blessed are the pure in heart. This word pure means clean. Now, this is challenging because watch this in a few more scriptures down. Jesus is going to tell um, his disciples that out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts, murder, adultery, fornication, false witness and blasphemy. So if my life being characterized by overflowing with the Spirit and controlled by the Spirit is by having a pure heart and all of these things come out of a pure heart and I can't clean my heart. How do I have a pure? How do I get a pure heart? Ezekiel 36, watch this. Ezekiel 36 says, God speaking through the prophet says, I will take your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. So watch this. It's a heart transplant. How do we have a, a pure heart? How do we get a clean heart? We accept the heart God gives us. God has to give us a clean heart. And then watch this. The good news is, blessed are the pure in heart. My grandmother used to say, um, quote this um, beatitude um, before she ate dinner. She would always say, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Watch this. The good news is, not only is this speaking of eschatology in the end times, Blessed are the pure in heart when God gives us a new heart. Again, referring back to the first scriptures, um, the born again experience. We shall see God. But watch this. In the now, pure hearts open us to revelation of God. You want to see God today? Accept a clean heart. Have a transfer heart. Have a heart transplant and take the new heart God seeks to give you daily. Next goes on and says, blessed are the peacemakers. The fourth sign and symbol of a life being filled and overflowing and being controlled by the spirit is blessed are the peacemakers. Peace is equated to unity. And watch this. It says peacemakers, not peace lovers, because some people love peace, but some people don't. Some people that love peace are not the same people that pursue peace or make peace. See, it's one thing to like peace. It's one thing to make peace. Blessed are the peacemakers. In other words, what am I doing in circumstances and situations around me to create peace? In other words, those who are characterized, those who are filled with the spirit of God, those who have been controlled or being controlled by the spirit of God. Watch this. Create peace in their environment. What did Jesus say on the boat when the disciples woke him up from asleep during a storm? He stands up and he speaks to the storm and he says what? Peace. Be still. Why? I want to bring unity with what's going on around you and you. That's good. In other words, those who are peacemakers have the ability by the spirit of God to bring. Watch this. The elements around into unity with people. <laughs> Many times we focus on it. And or we focus on and, and we try to get even with people, but we never deal with the wind and the storms around that's calling the lack of peace. Peacemakers speak to the it in the situation and we stop dogging people out. Lord, help me. I wish I had some help now. When, when I'm a peacemaker, I'm not trying to get even. I'm trying to deal with the it, the storm, the winds, the rain that's causing the chaos. Peacemaker, blessed are the peacemakers. And then last but not least, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom. Blessed are those who are persecuted. Uh oh. Persecuted. The book end of the kingdom. Watch this. It begins with being what we said at the very beginning first. Being poor in spirit. Now it ends with what? Persecution, being poor in spirit and now persecution. That's the booking of the kingdom. So he says, watch this. Watch this. The kingdom now is solidified through persecution. You enter it with a poor spirit, realizing that you can't be spiritual without Christ. It's closed. Watch this with being persecuted, not 
not punished for making bad choices, the persecuted for righteous sake. <laughs> There's a difference. So when we watch this, what is persecution? It is it is suffering for the belief that goes against the establishment, goes against the status quo. So when I seek to stand for my relationship with God and I have to suffer for my relationship with God, that is persecution. And God says that's kingdom. And that is the sign of a life that is controlled by the spirit. Uh, when we get to the point where we're not just born again and have the spirit that we're born again, we've been inaugurated into the kingdom. When we get to the point where we not just have it by ontologi ontologically by being born again, but being filled. But the third dimension where Christians need to get to the third dimension of being filled with the spirit is where we are willing. Watch this to put our relationship with God on the line. Persecution. And so watch this. Persecution says the text is characterized by opposition. In other words, if, if you never experience opposition, it may mean you're going with the opposition. True sign, a true test that my life is being filled with the spirit and being controlled by the spirit. I will stand for my relationship with God will oftentimes put me in juxtaposition with the establishment, the status quo. And I suggest that if you always get along with the status quo, if you always agree with what everybody's saying, that may be a sign that you have not been totally in control by the spirit and that your relationship with Christ and your relationship with God is not priority because there's no way that you can be right with God and right with everybody else. Lack of opposition should be a sign that we are moving with the kingdom and that God is in control of our lives and our lives are spirit controlled. Blessed, as I come to a close, blessed, this um, again, blessed also speaks of one translation, um, biblical translation, translate this word blessed, happy. Happy speaks of circumstances or conditions. And so we've said that your attitude determines your altitude. In other words, now when we understand that the spirit filled life, the life that is controlled by the spirit of God is a life. Watch this. That will change your situation. Blessed or happy. Your situation changes when you realize that your attitude, when your attitude changes, when you realize, number one, who you are, when you realize who you are and realize that the spirit controlled life is what sets you apart from everything else and everyone else in the world to live on purpose, to live with power, to live with provision. The kingdom of God is manifested and expanding through our lives. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you for this time. I pray for those listening would grab a hold to the power and provision of the spirit controlled life. Blessed are those that hunger and thirst, those that strive, those that pursue righteousness, right relationship with you. You declared that they would be filled to overflowing and controlled by your spirit. Father, I pray now that these Beatitudes would become our attitude for living and existing. And out of our right attitude, our situations and our circumstances change, not because we've done something with our hands, but because we realized who we are and whose we are. Let us be poor in spirit. Let us mourn. Let us be meek. Let us hunger and thirst for righteousness. Let us be merciful. Let us accept the heart you give that we may have a pure heart. Let us be peacemakers. Let us endure persecution. Release your spirit, O oh God, anew and afresh upon this house, upon our lives, upon our families. Yes, Lord, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. We thank you, Lord, that our attitude determines our altitude. We give you praise in Jesus name. Amen. 
Higher praise, we've had some great days, but listen, the best is still yet to come. Can I encourage you and admonish you to let you know that your attitude determines your altitude. Realize who we are and that the life of Christ flowing through us, spirit-filled lives as believers, is all that we need to overcome the challenges we face today. We face some challenges, but I want you to know and realize that it's the spirit-filled life. It is the spirit-empowered life. It is the spirit-controlled life that gives us the edge. Take this new lease on life. Walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Consider these beatitudes. Consider your attitude. Consider your mindset. Put on the mind of Christ in these days, in these times. Guard your heart. Guard your ears. Guard your eyes. But most of all, guard your tongue. Let's see what God does in this season. I said this is the month of August, the eighth month. This is a month of new beginnings. Let your attitude be reshaped and reframed in this month. Allow God to do something in your attitude this month that ensures new beginnings, that ensures newness and freshness coming daily in your life. I so hear and feel this word in this time, this season that we are in. Embrace it, discern it, walk in it. I want to remind you about today at four o'clock. Please join us if you can. God is doing some phenomenal things as we develop our legacy, as we plan for next year, 20 years of celebrating what God has done in our lives and the life of this ministry. God bless you. Praying for you. Love you. See you soon. Are you interested in making Higher Praise Family Church your new home? Head on over to the website and hit contact us in the top right corner. You'll get added to our church roster and get plugged into a discipleship group. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in to Higher Praise Family Church and our YouTube channel. Can I admonish you, please subscribe to our channel and share it with your family and friends. Also want to invite you to follow us on social media as well as visit our website at www.higher-praise.org.